Hello everyone and welcome back to another Destiny 2 Retrospect. Today, with the cutscene epilogue of Season of Plunder, we are doing, you guessed it, Season of Plunder Retrospect. So let's get to the details, but before we do, I just wanted to remind everyone if you could, please subscribe. I know a lot of people who watch my videos who are not subscribed, that would help me out a lot. Uh, hit notification button as well so you know when I post a video. And uh, well, let's get right into it. So in the interest of keeping this video short, we have three main categories we are going to rank Season of Plunder by, and we'll have an overall rank. The first category we're going to talk about is weapons, and weapons is something that Season of Plunder does very well. Season of Plunder introduced a new arc perk along with arc 3.0, this of course being Volt Shot. Uh, you can get Volt Shot on Brigand's Law, which is the sidearm. From Season of Plunder, you can also get it on Tarnished Metal, as well as Cells by Pitch Class. Uh, although the best gun you want this perk on is probably Brigand's Law, because boy oh boy, it's great for ad clear. To be honest, it's like the arc version of Incandescent. It's really, really, really nice. It clears ads really fast. Uh, and in Crucible, I, I don't really think it's that good in Crucible, but... I guess it's fun. Like I, I like watching the electricity, like just like watching the fire from incandescent. Uh, Tarnished metal with volt shot isn't bad. Uh, I just think it's best on Brigand's Law because it fires really fast, and you can get a really fast reload speed. But you can probably do the same thing on Tarnished Metal. Uh, I just really haven't crafted one yet, so I don't know how that goes. Um, also, Sail Spice Pitch Glass, by the way. That gun can get some insane perk rolls. I'm very happy that they made all of these guns craftable because trying to get these perk rolls would be utterly disgusting uh, because I, who has time for that? Uh, you can get Rapid Hit Focused Fury, Rapid Hit Vorpal, Rapid Hit Frenzy. There are a lot of good perk rolls for uh, sales by Pitch Glass and you know, it's a, you know for DPS it's, it's probably not bad. Um, for PvP, I don't. I can get Moving Target Swashbuckler. Not like the best, but not bad. My favorite role for Brigand's Law, the one that I crafted it with, is Feeding Frenzy Volt Shot. So you can just get this insanely quick reload if you stack Feeding Frenzy plus Volt Shot, and, and you're just an ad clear machine with that role. It's so fun. Uh, I have about 1,700. Uh, <laughs> 1700 enemies defeated on my Brigand's Law so far. I mean, I, I love that thing. So, for weapons, I would honestly give Season of Plunder, I would give it a solid A plus for weapons. I think there is room for improvement because Plank's Stride, quite honestly, is not good. Uh, Volt Shot on that, I can understand why it might be a little bit overpowered. But it's just not that good in the, the SMG. Um, I forgot what the, the name is. Um, Blood Feud. I just remembered it magically. But it's it's not really that desirable. There are much better SMGs out there. Uh, that is definitely not close to the top of the list. Uh, and you know that's really it. All the other weapons are really good. Uh, the linear, of course, Brigand's Law and Tarnished Metal all shine uh, pretty brightly. So again, A plus for the weapons. Oh, uh, and I almost forgot about the shotgun. The shotgun is actually pretty good as well. No reprieve. Uh, stasis shotgun. I can't believe I almost forgot about this. Um, I think my only problem with it is the frame of the gun is a little obtrusive. Or obstructive, excuse me. Um, it's just like a large frame. It's not like collective obligation bad, but it's pretty big uh otherwise it's it's really fun I, i'm a fan of slug shotguns overall so it doesn't take much for me to be interested in that and remember this is completely opinion based so you may not agree with the a plus you may think it's higher or lower so take it with a bit of a grain of salt if you will uh these are my own rankings I'm not using it based on anyone else's so then we get to content 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 now Catch Crash and Expedition really just don't satisfy in any way, shape, or form. 
I think the idea is cool. However, towards the end, it just got really, really repetitive. And I think the main issue with this is how bad it was at the start uh, with Scallywag. Because having to just like think about grinding for 50, 50 ruffians, it did not feel good. And um, it's great that they fixed it. But the time that I spent doing it beforehand, because it literally took them until like the last month of the season to change it from 50 to 10, I think I had like 40 already, which is a lot of time. And if you do the math, right, just, just bear with me for a moment, right? It takes two minutes for the first ruffian to appear, right? Which the first one is guaranteed. So you're guaranteed two ruffians per expedition run, right? So that means you'd have to do 25 expedition runs to get 50 ruffians. Now, that's not horrible, right? It's not bad. And there's a chance for you to get a second one on each thing. The thing is, you have to wait two minutes, right? Plus doing everything else. So it's about like 10 minutes per expedition. So like 250 minutes all said and done. Not to mention, you know, you have to do... You had to do previously, you had to do uh, Master Catch Crash. You don't anymore, right? Um, and you know, enough complaining about that anyways. It's great that they changed it so that you don't have to grind your heart out. I just think it kind of spoiled for it for me in the beginning and the changes were too little, too late. It's good to know that in the future, maybe they'll have a bit of a lighter side on it. I think if you're gonna have people grind for something, it shouldn't be something that's locked behind a timer and RNG, which is what the ruffians were locked behind. I think if there was a specific way to get them to spawn, people would have been much better, uh, or excuse me, they would have been happier or more uh, agreeable to grinding out the ruffians. But seeing as though there were certain conditions that you couldn't control as a player, that you had to get, uh, you, know, you had to wait, it's it, it just makes no sense and they they obviously were like yeah we need to change this and uh they did so in hindsight Bungie, maybe do it faster next time thank you thank you so uh <laughs> the content season of plunder gets a c c minus also uh i guess pirate hideouts were a thing i i really like they weren't fun they weren't memorable they were just like little strikes, I don't even know what to call them. They they just they weren't fun. They, so again, what? Why were they there? I guess just to collect the relics. Cool, cool. All right. So this last one is going to be the story. Uh, so there are spoilers here if you have not completed the season of plunder story. I highly su suggest you go and do that before watching this last part of the video. I will try to leave a timestamp of when I'm done talking about this, so if you want to watch the end, I mean, there's not really much else, so, aside from this, but the story was actually really, really good, and I think this is something Bungie has been nailing on these small little seasons, is the story. They've thought it through a lot more, and the conflict between Ido and Aramis, as well as Mithrax, uh, has been really, like, like a yin and yang, right? Ido and Mithrax are trying to use the light and this ally with the guardians in the last city to guide the elixir into a new age of prospering, where Aramis is clinging on to the old ways and trying to use the darkness as a means of survival for her elixir following. And you can see how Mithrax and Ido, even though they're kind of like sworn enemies to Aramis and Mithrax plagued by his past, uh, trying to get rid of that past, trying to forget about it uh, and move on to a, a new future for him, himself and his house. <laughs> Not like his, his actual house, but you know, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a really nice like light and dark story, which is the saga that's you know coming to an end, so it kind of makes sense that that would be the theme of the season. Um, 
also the cutscene if you haven't watched it today will also <laughs> leave a spoiler warning about that there's a new cutscene as of November 29th uh, Tuesday at reset it came out so go watch that cutscene all you have to do is log in uh, the reliquaries were used to revive Osiris he wasn't dead but he was like in a coma catatonic state whatever um, Mithrax took them and like refined the darkness inside the reliquaries and used it to uh, revive Osiris and that was a really nice touch so we'll, we can assume that he'll have some uh, relevance next season uh, he is apparently the reason why we now know that there's a uh, secret city on Neptune obviously Neo Muna which will be featured in Lightfall uh, because he's remembered some stuff from Savathun who knew about Neo Muna before she of course met her demise so uh, maybe we'll have some kind of introduction to the enemies or uh, the allies people from Neo Muna so the story, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, nobody else is taking the great assault. Let me know what you guys think, but I think the story for Season of the Plunder gets a solid S tier. I think if it wasn't for this major content drought, a lot of people would enjoy this storyline. And it's, it's sh with these seasonal storylines, they're short, they're sweet, to the point, and they're very, very wholesome and I think it's exactly the kind of storytelling that Destiny's been missing and it's relevant to the storyline right Osiris remembering Neo Muna from Savathun uh, having controlled him uh, and obviously that's where we're headed next so you know it's not like in Destiny's past where we'd have multiple seasons that had no correlation at all you know these seasons make sense together they blend well and they essentially are like, they're connected, which is what you want in these seasonal storylines. So, um, I'm excited about next season, even though we we know absolutely nothing, except that Osiris is going to be a part of it, and might have something to do with Neo Muna, but that's really all we know at this point. So, uh, I like the mystery of it, but I do think it's kind of sad not having anything to talk about right now and speculate. Let me know what you guys think about Season of Plunder. Did you enjoy it? Uh, and right before I give my overall, I just want to say again, if you could, please subscribe. I appreciate it a lot. I know I've said it twice already, so sorry if that annoys you a little bit, but I would really appreciate it if you could. And season of Plunder, it's an overall B+. Not a horrible season, but not really the best season. And again, I really just think this season suffered from how Bungie has to trickle out this content in a very like uh, drip drop content kind of way. You know, it's a little bit here, a little bit there, and you know, there wasn't really much to do this season, and it gets boring, right? I think uh, that's where you have to do it. And, and the the seal was just horrendous to grind at first. And sure, they fixed it, but again. Really, that's just the biggest complaint, is that it was too little, too late. Story weapons were on point. Uh, content was just lacking, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, that's to be expected, right? Not, not that it was only lacking, but it was bad. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was too grindy. And I know people like to grind, but it wasn't like a fun grind. It was like a, like a chore list the seal that, that's how i would describe it and it was a long chore list and it wasn't enjoyable i don't think any chore list is so yeah anyways uh, i'll see you guys next time i'll um, be posting a lot of stuff about the new season and whatnot when that comes out uh and yeah peace out